Well, hello there, strangers. Long time no talk. I realize I kind of dropped off the face of the earth for a bit, but don't worry. I'm back and I'm ready to talk about the business of being creative and the creativity behind running a business. In case you forgot, because, you know, it's been kind of a long time, this is the Creative Queso podcast and I am your host, Jennifer Perkins. So where exactly have I been? Well, you know, as some of you might know, when I'm not podcasting, I kind of have this thing for Halloween. And then, you know, Christmas comes right after that, which I also enjoy. I was busy all fall creating content for companies like Penguin Brand Dry Ice, Doris, Sherbonder, even McDonald's came calling. Then there were the videos and the home tours for HGTV Handmade and Goodwill. Plus... Plus, did I tell you guys I was writing a kid's craft book and it was due last fall? Totally not complaining. I'm just saying it was really hard to find five seconds to have a podcast conversation with someone. Things, however, have slowed down as they tend to do in January for all of us. And I'm ready to get back on the podcasting horse And who better to help me get back into the swing of things than the hosts of the Crafty Ass Females podcast, Kristen Tweedell and Amanda Zampelli. I'll admit, besides being busy, I was having a wee bit of podcast burnout. That being said, Creative Queso will now be every other week going forward. Burnout, podcast conversation flow, preparing guests and yourself for interviews, promotion, blah, 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 blah. These are all things that Amanda and Kristen and I talk about in this episode. It's really a conversation between three podcasters about all things podcasting. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? Or perhaps you need some moral support about the one you are currently hosting Well, guess what? This episode is for you. Let me tell you a little bit about my guests real quick. By day, Amanda is a school teacher with a creative background in the scrapbooking industry. That's actually how she and I connected because I use some of her fabulous paper designs. Kristen runs a website called The Awesome Ladies Project, which is also in the memory keeping and storytelling sphere. It's kind of a combo of feminism and scrapbooking, which I enjoy completely. Together, they co-host the Crafty Ass Females podcast. They have had guests like Lisa Congdon, Austin Cleon, Ali Edwards, and moi, among others. However, they do lots of episodes with just the two of them discussing topics like people pleasing and working smarter, not harder. With a guest or without, each episode is amazing. Speaking of Amanda and Kristen and being amazing, I'm going to shut my pie hole now and let's get to this episode already. Crank it up, peeps, because here we go. Okay, guys, after some technical difficulties, and it wouldn't be a podcast episode without them, we are back. Thank you, Kristen and Amanda, for being here. Thank you. Yay. Hooray, hooray. Okay, as I was saying, it's been a while. I've been on a bit of a hiatus because, you know, the holidays. And so you guys are kind of like bringing me back. So I am I'm excited to talk podcasting with y'all. We're excited to talk with you. I'm excited okay. to be on this end of it. <laughs> right i know yeah. like just doing the, just doing the talking that like that's yeah. my favorite part too yeah. <laughs> maybe that's a new format maybe i should try that as a podcast like where i have guests and they just interview me yeah. i like that idea <laughs> Ooh, yeah. that is a good idea <laughs> Anything you ever wanted to ask me. So, you know, for for those that haven't heard Crafty Ass Females and or haven't heard the episode where I was on, could you guys give us a quick kind of elevator pitch about what your show is about? Yeah, sure. So Crafty Ass Female is a show. It is a crafty lifestyle show where we talk about how we make beautiful things and make beautiful things happen. And we like to tell women that you already have everything you need you just need to be able to do it and we like to help you and give you just kind of a little gentle nudge and say like you've got this (laughs) uh and sometimes we all need that no matter how crafty we are 
Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things is we've had topics on how hard it is to make adult friends, how you need, you know, feminism in your life, how, you know, the different projects that are going on around the internet and how sometimes you really need a brand new project. And sometimes the last thing you need is another project. (laughs) And, you know, like we've had really great interviews with all sorts of amazing crafty women uh, including incredible people like you. We've had Ali Edwards, we've had Elise Blaha Kripe, Austin Cleon, and then we've had some people who are, I don't want to say just, you know, regular crafty ladies, but, you know, just regular crafty ladies. And those have been mm-hmm. some of our best episodes also. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think of the crafty part of our podcast, like Crafty Ass Female, as like, we do talk about the creative projects and the creative side of us as females, but also crafty as in like resourceful, like finding our way through the world as women. So I love that crafty kind of plays on those two things. And as Kristen said, like for me and what is it now, like over a hundred episodes, like it's always just been, it served as like a weekly reminder of that, that we're crafty in so many ways and we are capable whether we realize it or not. And then every episode kind of brings that back up, no matter who we talk to. It's always like a theme of like, Oh, this is hard about living in the world today, but it's okay. We got this. Here's how we got this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I love that that works in almost every episode too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice too. I mean, it's nice that you guys have each other as co-hosts, but like, you know, within, within any career sphere, but you know, what, what I do, like in particular, like it can get lonely. Like I'm not with other people crafting, you know? So sometimes having like podcast friends, you know, is nice having conversations with people about things, you know, you'd want to discuss like what you're saying, like adult friends or, you know, other issues that might be going on. So podcasting is a nice thing to have that for. Yeah. I don't think we would have been able to do the show without each other. And I think that's part of what makes it so great. And I think it's part of what makes the show so appealing to other people is that, you know, we, well, we weren't friends before. It's not that we weren't friends before the show started, but we weren't, we were friendly before the show started and we were friends on social media before the show started, but we became friends because of the show. Mm -hmm. And like, that was a great, thing for listeners to listen happen and I think it really helped listeners become part of the show and you know now when people check in each week it's like they're our friends too and so Mm -hmm. they become part of the conversation and it's like oh I'm checking in with my besties Amanda and Kristen each week yeah no I love that like you know hearing you guys in your discussion it's made me think like man I wish I'd done you know, had a guest, I mean, I guess it's not too late. It's not, I'm not a hundred episodes in, but you know, had a co-host because you guys do have that, you know, you're able to bounce ideas off of you. And then not to mention, it just helps take some of their responsibilities off. You know what I mean? Like it's a two for one special, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's great because we have a pretty clear division of labor and there's stuff that I'm good at that Amanda isn't. And there's stuff that Amanda's great at that I do not want to do (laughs) and Mm -hmm. like when you have a podcast or when you do any kind of creative venture you know you wear a million hats and this way you know we could divide those hats up (laughs) I like that I like the way you put that so how do you guys you know you you said that like you guys kind of became better friends via the podcast but you know Kristen you're in Michigan and Amanda you're in New York so how do you guys how do you guys know each other? And at what point were you just like, hey, you know what? We live in different states, but let's do a podcast together. I, I grew up in North Jersey. So I'm a New York City girl, just like Amanda. And we went, we met at a scrapbooking workshop in the city. Oh. So that's how we knew each other. So like we actually did know each other. I love telling the story of how it was like Kristen's however many if like real life crafting event that she's gone to and it was my first so like I was so starstruck by the fact that other girls were meeting here and that it wasn't just me by my lonesome and Kristen's like oh yeah I know how this goes you know so we were like two opposite ends but you know um, we everyone was exchanging uh, social media that day 
And I got her social media handle from that day and then followed her like for the next, what was it like five years before we, before you reached out and the podcast, the idea for it was born, but just through like following, like, yeah, we were never friends, friends, but happy, crafty, meet people, friends. And then yeah, I have followed each other on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, some of my, like, I would call them some of my like best friends. Some of my closest friends are people that, you know, I met that way. And then it just kind of, you know, why not? It's like online dating, but for friends. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and then one day Amanda just, you know, left her, her job and she was like, I'm doing a new thing. I'm, you know, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I work from home. I have a crafty business. If you have think that we, you know, we want to do something together, maybe we should do something together. And she was like, what about a podcast? <laughs> it was living in my brain. It's just the first thing that came out. And, uh, I, it was funny because we both kind of felt like we wanted to do one or it could happen, but we both knew we didn't want to do it alone. So it was like right from the the first inception idea of the podcast, it was like, let's do it together. <laughs> so I love it. Yeah. And it's been, it's been great. It's been great. We've put out an episode every single Monday for the last 112 weeks now yeah, yeah man do you like now I'm I'm gonna be the first to admit I've not listened to 112 episodes you know it's on it's one of my new year's resolutions <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah. are you guys sometimes you do solo episodes right like it's just one of you are you guys it's, always yeah, just together? the two of us yeah it's always the two of us always the two of you man you guys are you're good like I think you know I think one of the reasons for me personally I took time off this fall is not only is ho- you know, the holiday season really busy for me, but I think I just personally was reaching like a burnout point. When I first got started, my producer was like, don't do every week. You're going to get burnout. Do every other week. So do you guys never feel like you'd never hit that burnout point like you again? Or do you guys batch or? All of the above. Yeah. <laughs> um, over the holiday, we do we do something called uh, From the Vault series. Mm -hmm. where we'll grab our favorite episodes from the year and then do like a new five to 10 minute introduction of like why this was our favorite episodes of the year. So that will give us a little bit of a buffer and it'll give people who are new to the show a chance to see some of our favorite episodes and it'll Mm -hmm. give us a, a little break. We do a good amount of batching when we do interviews. Like we'll interview maybe four to five people in a two week period. And then we did that in, it was like the whole month of August, knowing I'd be going back to school in September to teach. So we knew mm. that summertime, like we kind of batched in the summertime. So through the fall, we had them lined up. That it was That's helpful smart. this year. Mm-hmm. These are the yeah, things I need to be taking notes on and doing. <laughs> yeah, we, we're pretty good at knowing when we're going to be busy and what we need to do for the show and planning accordingly to that. Yeah. I feel like Mm -hmm. the show is 112 episodes big now. And I feel like we started it a little over two years ago, but what's weird is we work really hard and we balance each other out, but there's been this to me, like, I don't know if Kristen's picked up, but there's been this big serendipitous element to it where like almost everything that we've planned or we come up with kind of clicked and kind of worked for us and like moving the show forward. Like even our only male guest, Austin Cleon, he was episode 69. Like, I just think that's, no, I, just, I no, love that. I all. love that. And we didn't plan it, but I'm like, I, that jazz is me. like things like that. We're like, we'll, we'll set something up and it feels intuitive and right. And then and something magical will happen or like it'll spur another idea that works great. Like, you know, so I just, that's also been this element that's be, been beyond our control is like, it's just felt mm-hmm. right. And we've just kind of ridden the wave of it working so far, knock on wood. But plus all the time you put in and the showing up and the people we try to get on, you know, so it's like a mix, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, she's totally right. She's absolutely right. Like it is that, um, you make your own luck type thing. Yeah, where I'm a believer in that. Yeah, and it's it's something that we found that if the show didn't work, if we didn't click, if people didn't love the show, we wouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. And 
And like, we've changed so much about the show throughout our hundred plus episodes. And we're going to continue to change the show to make it work for us so that we can continue to put out an episode every Monday morning. Like, I think that's also the most important part is that it has to be flexible enough to fit into our lives because like the podcast is not the most important thing in either of our lives. And so for it to play a huge role in our lives for us to prioritize it, it has to be a little bit flexible. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like it has to evolve and grow with you guys, with the podcast, with your relationship Mm -hmm. and what's going on. Yeah, that's a great way, a great way to think about it. Because I think sometimes with any project, I know I get caught up in this where I'm just like, all right, this is the format. This is how it is, you know, and everything. Like I just can't, it's hard for me to to deviate, you know, or to realize like it could ebb and flow and change and tweak. Like, so that's great advice for people. At this point, we have produced two or 300 hours of content. Our show is about an hour long. And then we have, uh, we have a Patreon model where Mm -hmm. it's $5 a month. And then you get access to a bonus after chatter show that we do, which is kind of like a special features. Yeah. An Mm -hmm. after show. (laughs) Um, like if you ever watched Game of Thrones or Walking Dead, they all had those after shows and like, that's kind of what we do. Mm-hmm. And so we have literally the hundreds of hours of content. And so like, if somebody watched, you know, listen, started listening to our show from the beginning and got to the end, they're going to like us. Like nobody's going to sit through hundreds of hours of content and then decide, oh, well, they changed the, some formatting stuff in the middle there. I don't <laughs> think I'm okay with that. Uh-huh. So we have to be flexible in order to please ourselves to get the work done and mm. not be afraid of like, oh, well, we might lose some listeners. Yeah, but we're going to lose some listeners anyway because, you know, people's lives change. And sometimes they don't have room for another podcast. And sometimes, you know, they'll come back to us when they have room again, mm-hmm. you know. And we have to worry first and foremost about the things that let us produce a great show because that's what's going to make it the most listenable thing for our audience. We know who our audience is. We know what they like. They like hearing great conversations between me and Amanda. If we can produce a show that's a great conversation between me and Amanda and sometimes a great, you know, a guest, Mm -hmm. then everyone's going to be happy. And so whatever it takes to produce a great show, that's what needs to happen. Whether it's, you know, changing the format a little bit, whether it's changing some software, whether it's tweaking it so it it works better or makes us a little bit more money or makes us less money now, but, you know, works better in the long run later on. All those options are open. Uh-huh. Agreed. <laughs> I was like, Amanda, do you have any input? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, even something too, like we've, we've talked about if we ever needed to doing like a solo episode, like we've said that before, like, Oh, if anything, I'd jump on or you, but we've never had to, but we know that's an option. I Mm. don't know. It's just, it's just been, I feel like it's been adding to the both of our life lives more than it's been taking away. So it's just been working and we both show up. Like it's, Mm -hmm. I feel like other things alongside it have dropped off. Like whether I tried this creative thing or that, and this has always been the one that's kept working, but we've talked about before Kristen coined the phrase, uh, accountability buddy, like just us being together. Like we kind of are each other's buddy and accountability for showing up and giving. So the other person does too. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes, that makes perfect sense. It's like having a running buddy. Yeah. (laughs) Somebody who's there. And, you know, the other thing, um, Amanda, you had mentioned, like, um, you said a a quote, a fear of conversation flow. And I think, I mean, I've experienced that sometimes. I'm assuming you mean like with a guest. And so is that what you meant? Yeah, just in general, like, that's never happened in 120, 112 episodes of us where like, Uh we've reached an awkward pause and had nothing to say. Like, we are people that talk but yeah yeah, it's like always going into it I always but I have an anxiety disorder so I think going into anything I'm like ah the worst (laughs) things ever but yeah like there's there's always this element at the start that the show was won't be good the, the episode won't be good or what if it's not good but that's I think why I've loved 
doing podcasting so much because it has to just be what it is in the moment. And there's no Mm -hmm. way it has to be a conversation. So whatever you bring is what you have. And however you feel that day is what it's going to be. And I think that's been a good lesson for me just about life. But because of this podcast is that whatever I have to offer in that hour is what it's going to (laughs) be. Yeah. And since you guys have each other, if, because I, I don't know that I have experienced that with a guest, but I've definitely had guests that like, I guess like maybe their like energy level isn't the same as mine. And it's not, you know, cause I'm just kind of a hyper, like blah, 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 person, you know? And so I'm just like, do I break it down? Do I try to keep bringing them up? Like, you know what I mean? Like Kristen, I see you like nodding. So at least you guys have each other. Like when that moment happens, like when your joke falls flat, like there's the other <laughs> one to go like, you're so funny. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that is something that's really great about our show is that when we have women who are a little bit more reluctant to take a more, I don't even want to say aggressive because that's not the right word, the lead in the conversation on the show, Mm -hmm. we do have each other to talk a little bit more. And that's cool because we can have women on the show who wouldn't necessarily be great guests on a one-on-one podcast show, but they are fantastic third guests, like third persons on our show. And in the same way, they're also fantastic third person guests when they're like literally the only person talking on the show because Amanda and I can just spitball like single questions. Mm -hmm. And then we have guests that have literally spoken, you know, 50 minutes of our 60 minute show. And those are also awesome interviews as well. People who are a little bit more reserved in their speech. Mm -hmm. We've had amazing guests where we've had more of a conversation about a topic and not necessarily a conversation revolving around a specific guest. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that that necessarily would work, say, if I were just interviewing a person, because then I would just dominate the conversation. And that's not a great show. I think, too, like we, I think because of my fear of, oh, no, the conversation wouldn't go. What if this is a quote unquote bad show? Right. Like I always have that fear going in. It's never been the case, but it's (laughs) my anxiety. But I think because of that, like we came up with the idea early on when we started taking in interviews and the show wasn't, we realized the show wasn't going to be just us two. We make an interview prep sheet. So Mm. I think that was my anxiety's way to ease my, to like reassure my anxiety of like, oh, it's okay. You'll have a, a, a skeleton to go off of, if anything, God forbid, you know, like, so, but it's worked. And I feel like it's worked for us because when something trails off, we kind of have this like reference sheet, right. That I print out, Kristen looks at the guest has in their hand. So I think that's been helpful too, for our guests. Almost every guest that comes on goes, picture that prep sheet like that really. So that's just an extra step in our week that we do for interviews. And, but it's paid off, I think in like better conversations than would have been if they didn't have that Mm -hmm. little template. And some guests, some guests we get everything on the template done and some guests we tell them in the beginning like if we touch nothing of this that's fine but it's just like where our brain was at going in if 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 you want to start a podcast if you're listening to this episode and you want to start a podcast and you want to do guests have an interview prep sheet like that has been the one it's it's a little bit extra work and sending it out to your guests that has been the one thing really that has given us like great interviews because even the people who have never done podcasts before. And we've had a bunch of people who have, it's been their first podcast, people who have had very serious anxiety about coming on the show. That prep sheet has helped them so much. And saying like, hey, you know, you can put down whatever kind of answer you want on your prep sheet. You don't have to fill out your prep sheet at all. These are the questions we might hit it gives them a space to say, hey, I'm I'm not going to be comfortable mentioning these things in this topic. And it lets them know to tell us beforehand, which alleviates some anxiety on their side as well. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just a note for the listeners too. It's not like a formal questionnaire that's pages and pages long. It's literally one page that the guests can print with just like little spaces for their notes. And if they turn it over and do more, like it's up to them, but it's just like a very quick, easy guide for them. It's not this any, this long, like 10 page thing. It's just the four, usually four questions that me and Kristen come up with that we want to hit. And those four questions alone are usually more than an hour's worth of thing. Like, so we sometimes hit them. We sometimes don't. We sometimes bring one after chatter. So it's usually four questions long. And we do like a question about the theme of the of the season that the, the guest usually answers. And then we do like a quick currently. So that's all on the page. And what we get to, we get to what we don't, we don't. But it's not intimidating. That was important for me to note. I feel like if you're going to make one, it doesn't have to be intimidating. It's just like a framework for their thinking. Yeah. No, I think it's helpful as hosts and on the guest side. You know, it's yeah. definitely on like my like 2020 to do list was, you know, knock off crafty ass females, like your vetting letter, not knock it off. But you know what I mean? If, mm-hmm. I mean, you guys know Please I sent you a it. Yeah, I mean, I sent you guys an email like here, you know, if you want to touch on these things, yeah. please do. But but it is, it's very helpful to have it. I mean, you're not going to go give a speech or whatever, you know what I mean? Like without exactly. some cliff notes. No, I agree. It's, right. it's good for both sides because for nervous guests, I think it's reassuring to them too to kind of know where you're going to go and what you're going to talk about and not not just completely throw anybody off. So out of, you know, speaking of guests, you have some, like you said, with just the two of you guys and which guests, do you have one that you like prefer? Do you love them equal? Ooh, like a favorite interview ever? Well, no, I mean, like, do you like, do you like it when you have a guest or do you like it when it's just the two of you? Like uh, what, you know, what, which ones do you like prefer or do you have like favorites in each category? I think it goes back and forth. Yeah. I think like when, by the time we've done like a few interviews in a row, I'm ready for it to just be me and Kristen again. Like I like, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh. I'm re- I I like it to be us, but then when it's a string of us and it does feel like it needs a little switch up, it's nice to have another person in there. I feel the exact same way. Yeah. Having a good conversation with a guest feels like it's the purpose of the show until mm-hmm. we have a great conversation with each other. <laughs> and it's like, oh no, this is the reason we have the show. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I'm sure like if you have a you know, a co-host like you guys do, there's a reason you guys thought, let's start a podcast together because you were probably already having those great conversations and you thought like, you know what I mean? Like we should do this in a podcast. Other people want to know the answers to these questions and or have the same questions, you know, whatnot. Well, I think it was funny because one of the things that we found out super early on, and it's like one of our first episodes, we like immediately realized, oh, we're having conversations out loud that we've been having in our heads silently for a really long time Mm -hmm. and I think the fact that the podcast like crafty so it is about crafts and that's usually the draw initially and we get these crafty women on that people know and they're like oh I want to find out more but the underbelly of that is always like real life issues like we never just Mm -hmm. stick to surface stuff that we can if we wanted to and it's still great but I love like the layers we peel with everyone so I feel like right like the conversations were always living there but not necessarily seen by the out by the presentation of people you know like I make this great stuff I make this great stuff and then we dive into like oh my gosh what is it like to craft like as a single mom or like whatever like you know Mm -hmm. so then it gets into like these deeper things that the podcast just naturally births just based on who we, me and Kristen are and like what we're really interested in, you know, mm-hmm. so your intuitive questions. Around. And then you guys have, you mentioned that you touched on it a second ago, but you guys have like a theme for each, you know, season. So how do you guys like come up with that? And how does that guide you towards like guest selection or even just like episode topics? That's a good question. <laughs> They just sort of happen. Right. They've been very (laughs) organic. The whole thing about the podcast has been very organic. But now being in season five, it's it's like this organic thing that happened that we're like, ooh, let's try that. And then it's worked. And now our brains are geared toward, well, what's next? what's the next season's theme like what would make sense Mm -hmm. and and it usually just like we I don't feel like we pick guests based on the theme but it's interesting how then on the prep sheet like that theme question will always change with the season so whatever we're giving to an a guest it's gonna have the theme question based on the season and like we've gotten like every guest has made sense in the season they're in they give us such a good theme question like answer that we're just like 
Yes. <laughs> you know, so it's... <laughs> because we spend so much time on the show, because we're doing it weekly, because we're so into it, it feels so natural and organic, but I feel like it's kind of one of those things like if you are a person, you know, I'm going to make a really terrible, weird analogy. If you're an arborist <laughs> and you cut trees for a living, like you're just going to be like, somebody's like, oh, well, how do you know how to prune that tree? And you're going to be like, well, you know, I just do it all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I know where to cut that, you know. Or, okay, so if you're mm. a hairstylist, right? That's so much better than tree arborist. Oh my God, I don't know how I came up with arborist. <laughs> that was pretty right, random. No, like, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah. You just like, we've spent so much time in these themes that mm -hmm. like we've been talking about it. Like we talked about, you know, this episode, we spent an hour talking about that topic, spent an hour talking about that topic. And then just organically, oh, well, wouldn't it be cool to talk to that person? Well, what, what if we talked about that person and then once we interviewed that person then like thinking about oh well this person's interesting too mm -hmm. and then once we've wrapped up with a theme the idea for something else comes up like we finished um work smarter not harder and then once we figured out how to work smarter not harder the idea of growth came along and then after growth we did reflection. We're very into the, the idea of like seasons. We're very into the idea of things growing with the show. And I feel like, like does that, 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 that works with you, right, Amanda? Like that yeah, sounds yeah. the way it, like, I think, how it happens. I think now thinking about it, I'm reflecting. See, there it goes. Right. But I just think that um, we've, you and I have been in like the memory keeping, scrapbooking, collaborative projecting sphere for quite some time, probably 10 years plus, that I feel like those spheres work in that ways too. Like they pick themes for projects. And they, so I think like we say organically, like it just happened, I don't know, hee hee hee, but I feel like we've been cultivated in this way to produce because of the spheres we've been in. So I just mm -hmm. feel like it's this natural way of working into what ever we created which is this podcast which is it kind of feels like a talking scrapbook right I guess so mm -hmm. right so like the themes the way that we would participate in challenges that would have themes or monthly you know word like so it's just been all what we've been around I guess that it would naturally be how we templated the podcast project that we created. sure and it's not all that different from blogging yeah, it's not. And it makes perfect sense because I'm definitely, you know, to like, let's make it all about me. But I mean, myself and a lot of people were those kind of people. Like if you're at a table full of a gazillion craft supplies, sometimes it's hard to pick what to use. But if you give yourself some parameters or a guideline or in this case, a theme, it could kind of make, you know, narrowing your focus could kind of make it a little easier and a little less overwhelming. Yes. You know, I can see how exactly. it's very helpful. And now that you're saying it out loud, I'm like, oh, this is good. See, it's like you're fixing my podcast it, issues right now. <laughs> it makes yeah. it so much easier. Right. Like I, I was literally, Amanda and I were recording earlier today and I was literally saying, I am that type of person who likes scheduling, likes routine, likes having a box up to a certain point. And then I rebel against it hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like, you know, give me that, you know, craft table full of everything and then you know give me a challenge to use five things and i feel like that's that's the podcast it's like a show comes out on monday it's going to be an hour long it's going to have the two of us and it's going to be part of the season of something that still gives us a lot of room we could have a guest there's a million topics under the season of reflection i mean you can reflect on literally anything yeah. I mean, you know, and, and that's what I mean. Like our topics are so broad that there's so much room inside of broad topics that you can make a show about anything. And work it into the theme. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it helps to tie everything in a little bit neater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just, 
it makes it a little bit more presentable. Yeah, yeah no, I, I like it. It makes it makes total it makes total sense. It makes it because I was thinking going into this new season, like, you know, I'm going to do this like more of like a crafty armchair expert version of things, you know, where it's like, I want to talk to you guys about your experience of like podcasting and what's working for you and how you deal with burnout. And then, you know, I want to like in my mind, I'm like, if there was like somebody and I could talk to them about these topics that are going out around in my mind, like those are the people I'm going to try to go after as guests. I think sometimes intuitively, I know for myself, you know, sometimes when you have any kind of situation like this, you want to book people who also are going to help you promote your show or have a new, you know, where people contact you like, do you want to have this guest on? They have a new book. They have a new thing. And you're like, yeah, they would be awesome to talk to. You know what I mean? Or whatever. But sometimes like there's really not that many things that you have in common with that person or you want right. to. I see you like nodding. Like, I'm glad I'm not alone. Like, yes, they seem awesome, but I'm not like I'm going to have to do a lot of research to figure out what to talk to this person about. Right. And I think for me and for us, I think a lot of that comes down to is this going to be an interesting conversation for our audience? We've had a lot of pitches from like lifestyle coaches and entrepreneurs and how to get your six-figure business going. Mm -hmm. And we've talked to a couple of lifestyle coaches, but we don't need to talk to seven lifestyle coaches. Yeah. I also feel like we're not a business podcast we're crafty life and lifestyle podcast so even if we did have them on our conversation would touch on their business but it wouldn't be like I want to know oh that's what you do for business but how do you feel in life like it would be I feel like we naturally work in like the core of people like that's what I'm interested in not, not necessarily well maybe it's because I'm not trying to start a business that'd be a different thing but Bea Chris had also said on that note that we realized as time went on that this was not an expert podcast at all. We are not trying to say we're experts in anything. We're not trying to make anyone an expert in anything that it's, we were more about, we were more exploratory podcasts. If we had a topic on our mind, we would explore it for an episode, not necessarily get to a conclusion at the end that was a piece of expert advice about the topic. So we, we mm -hmm. realized that, that we were never setting out to be experts, but we wanted to be explorers. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that too, like, so, um, yeah, no matter what. I like guess, that. Yeah. I like that idea that it's like, because I think sometimes like you can fall into that trap of like, whether you're writing a blog post or you're doing a podcast, like you could fall into that. The, everything needs to like, there needs to be a life lesson. Like you're right. going to walk away from that podcast. Like, and I just learned how to make six figure income or whatever, right. you know, and it doesn't have to be, it could be like what you guys are talking about, like a deep dive into a person, you know, that's within that for us, within a creative sphere, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan. Like my, one of the ways that I like to teach is to get people to explore on their own. I am a huge fan of asking open-ended questions, getting people to, you know, start the episode with a narrow-minded view of something and end the episode with a more expanded view on something. And you don't have to end the episode as an expert on something. If you end the episode just thinking a little bit differently about something, that's a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did a whole, I, I, it's not that I forget it, but it's, you know, it's one of those episodes that was like a special outlier kind of, but it works into what, but we did a whole election episode, right? Because <laughs> Kristen is so versed in it and I'm so opposite and naive in the topic. So I don't know. I just think about that episode all the time when Kristen listed it as like one of her most memorable, when we had like the hundredth episode and we were looking back and it really was because it's like, it was one of those things where like, we explored it in a way that we use both of where we were strong and not strong. And I, it was like a great episode. I don't know. It kind of talks about like what you were just saying. Like you want to open people's mind mm -hmm. to something that is sometimes a little scary and it still plays into crafty because it's a way that we need to be resourceful without it exactly being a craft. So I don't know. I always feel like that was like a highlight episode of how like the strength of the podcast kind of shined. And what you were saying? Kristen? Yeah, no, I like that. I mean, because there's so many podcasts with like craft in the title, but it's, you know, you don't need to be like so literal 
Like we don't have to like just talk about crafts all the time. (laughs) One of the things that I like about our show is that it's not just like a YouTube video with like the audio of a YouTube show because so many crafty things like are better done on video. Like, do you want to know how to glue things onto other things? Watch a video. Like the exploration of these topics, like why do we feel crappy when we scroll on Instagram and only look at things that people have curated and spent eight hours on when we think that we took a picture that takes five seconds? Like, why do we feel these things? Let's explore that. You know, how are we memory keeping in 2020? What are we doing when our planner is this year? How are we decorating for Christmas? Like we can explore these things and have conversations about them in ways that are not primarily visual. And I think that's something that a podcast can do a lot better than a YouTube video, than an Instagram post, than an IGTV. And those are the ways that I like to use the podcast as opposed to just being like, you know, here are 15 snacks that you can make for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Like we could talk about 15 snacks that you can make for Valentine's Day. But honestly, that's a waste of an hour of our time when you can just watch a, yeah. you know, you can look at a BuzzFeed listicle and get that information in two minutes. Mm-hmm. And so like if somebody's going to spend an hour with us, I want to make it worth their hour. I want you to feel like you're having a conversation with me and Amanda, like you are our friend, because if we didn't put this show out for other people, we could just have these conversations like on the phone or in text messages, but we do them so that other people can also be involved. Yeah. Oprah had this thing. What was it called where she invited the legends or whatever dinner? Remember that? She like invited Mm -hmm. all these women at like this long table that she wanted. Like, I always feel that when I'm, whenever we're picking guests or like whenever I was like, if I had a long dinner party or like, like you do like the calf cans, like if I were to ever really Mm -hmm. have like a a group of women together, like what would I want to talk about? Or like this one, like when we had the Allie Edwards episode, I was always like, that felt like I just had brunch with her. Like, I feel like the conversation needs to feel like we're at brunch. Not that I'm trying to extract super amounts of information, although that happens. But like, I like the brunch conversations, the the back you know. and forth. Yeah. Yeah. About like, what's going to help me get through this week? <laughs> kind exactly. of like gather. But because we yeah. we all need that kind of thing. So yeah. I, have, I have a couple of, individual questions for y'all too. I wanted to touch on Amanda since you're talking, let me ask you first when I did my, you know, sad version of your uh, prep sheet that you guys have, you (laughs) mentioned, (laughs) you mentioned you wanted to talk about how do we quote, get smart about podcasting. Now, what did you mean by that? Or does that have to do with the theme that you guys had about, you know, working smarter, not harder? Yeah, let's like dive into that was three. So I I don't know. I just feel like Kristen and I have put in, I don't know, again, I don't know if there's an answer to this, but let's throw it out there. So Kristen and I have put in over two years of our lives on the podcast. I feel like it does add to my life. I don't want to get rid of it. It it's that creative space for me to get the stuff off my mind, hear back from Kristen, hear back from these amazing women. Like it's my brunch combo that I don't get to have every Sunday at brunch because I'm doing other things. So I love it for what it's been. But I think to myself, like Kristen's a lot better at going like the podcast needs to change in this way because X, Y, Z, like she's all, I am the yipper yapper. (laughs) I'm really good at that. But she (laughs) always like grounds us. I feel like she's the rock in the pod, in in our co-hosting companionship. And she's always grounding us and going, but wait, this is how it'll be smarter. Wait, this is how it'll be smarter. So, you know, and I always, so for me, it's just a hard question. Like what, what can I contribute to the being smarter about this podcast? And then I think like, you know, we've done this for over two years, And what would be a way it could give back to us? Although it's have emotionally and like creatively, but like maybe monetarily Mm -hmm. a little bit, like how could we get smarter with that? Or how could we get smarter with how we put our time into it? She's already on it. She's always on it. But like, for me, that's always a question that I'm thinking and I never have the answer to. (laughs) She usually comes up with the answer. So I don't know, just as a podcaster too, I'm like, how could it give back more, even though it's given us so much, but like, how could we use it better. I don't know. No, I know what you mean, Kristen. What are your thoughts on that? It's hard. I mean, one, podcasting is hard. Like, po- it's, it just is. It. I mean, we have numbers that put us in the top 5% of podcast downloads. We have 
uh, you know, money coming in that puts us in the top 5% of podcasts. But it's not a lot of money. I mean, it's a couple hundred dollars a month, but like that's still more than 95% of podcasts and it's more than 99% of podcasts run by women. And it feels mm-hmm. like a job, like duh, like this could easily be a full-time job, like the work that could go into it, but it mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't give what a full-time job gives. So I like, so right now for both of us, it has to be this part-time job that doesn't act like a job, but it is a job. Like doing this is a job, you know? No, it totally is. By the time you, you know, you pick guests and you do all the social media promotion and, you know, and for me, since Kristen, I know you do, you know, a lot of the editing and such, like I, I don't, so I pay someone to do it. So to me at this juncture, I'm paying to podcast Right. You know, so I totally get that and have that conversation with myself. Like, I love hanging out and talking to people like you and the conversations and what I get out of it that way. And I hope my listeners do as well. But that is definitely something I think about, too. Like, you know, what do you guys feel about? Like, I know you guys have products because your logo is so dang cute. And then you also your Patreon, the after chatter thing with the video part is awesome. That would mean I couldn't be sitting in my like furry meme house coat that I'm in right now if I did that. But <laughs> but it is it is so smart. So do you guys like what are your what are your thoughts on that? Should should I add should I add some of that action in? Should other podcasters? Yes. Cuz why I mean, not? Just, just I mean yes. The the answer is yes. You should do a Patreon because you will have fans and they will want to give you some money. Even if it's, you know, $30 a month. There you go. You know, there's your posting bill. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's, uh, yes. Like just, yes. <laughs> um, See? There, the, right. Like that's the short answer. The short answer is yes, because listeners understand that you are putting in work, you know, and even if you have 1% of listeners or 0.1% of listeners who want to help you pay your bills, then yes, because you know, $30 a month, $50 a month, $100 a month, that pays the bills. Mm -hmm. And if you're not paying to podcast, then that's awesome. And that's the first step to getting paid. Like right now we don't have sponsors because we don't have time to go out and look for sponsors. Mm -hmm. But I was contacted by a woman run ad podcasting group over the weekend and we're going to get involved with them so that you know when there are companies looking for campaigns and they want you know a mid-sized podcast to run influencer campaigns with that might work for us well with your what i'm hearing you say too and also like yes those things have worked for us and have been great but we also could have added again like i was saying like a hundred more things that could have grown us faster or whatever but we both actually can't like we can't. Right, yeah. no i hear you because this isn't our this is none of our full-time right. gigs like we no. have the things that actually pay our bills so in essence this is a a labor of love side hustle in some right. ways mm-hmm. Right. And to make it more would require a lot more money and time than we have. So yes, we should do that. But if you have the time, like as an advice, yes, do that. But also you need to have the time and the money for Mm -hmm. it. I mean, Patreon would only be time, right? Like to upkeep the Patreon page, at least how we do it, right? You upkeep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would say yes to the Patreon before you do merch, because right now we have absolutely no time to advertise that we have merch. So we haven't sold much merch lately at all. Like, it was great when we had time to advertise the merch because then everybody was like, oh, you have merch? We'll buy the merch. So we made money when we first put out the merch. And now we haven't because we don't have the time to advertise the merch. When we have more money, eventually, then we'll hire somebody to make some marketing stuff for us. Right. We've talked about that in the past as far as getting smarter and like hiring someone to help us, but then we didn't have the money for that. So it was like, you know, it goes yeah. back and forth of like what the podcast itself can handle, what we can do. Right. You can mm-hmm. only do so much with the resources you have. Exactly. I, I mean, I know exactly what you mean. All of those things are like things I know, you know, it's like, as I always say, it's like, do as I say, not mm-hmm. as I do. It's like, yes, in theory, I, we all know we should do all of those right. things, but it's just like, you know, do I have the money? Do I have the time? Do I have the, you know, the this, this, and the this? Exactly. All right. Good to know. And so, and then Kristen, I wanted to touch on your retreat because I find that interesting. I know you guys bring up like 
you know, feminism and politics and things like that. That's definitely like a current that I see pop up again and again in your conversations. So talk to me about your platform that you have in your event. Yeah. So I started the Awesome Ladies Project. I actually started it as a challenge to women to spend two hours a month doing a creative project that makes you feel awesome. And I did this about five years ago. I'm well, probably probably about six years ago now. As I created a couple more challenges, I started this website called The Awesome Ladies Project. And it turned into a membership site where you can learn how to scrapbook the story of your life. And last year, I built it up into a alternative social media place where if you want to scrapbook the story of your life, you can come and it is like a Facebook alternative. So if you are sharing projects of your scrapbooks and photos of your life and all of these things that maybe you don't want to share on social media because maybe one, you just don't want to share them on social media because of privacy reasons. Maybe you don't want to share them on social media because you have your family and your friends and that's just not your scene. So I built this website where it looks pretty much like old Facebook used to look. There are groups, you get a profile, there is a, a wall and you can post your pictures, you post your scrapbook layouts, you can post your art journals. And it's really awesome. I love it. It makes me so happy. There are two different membership tiers. There's a free tier. You get access to the blog, you get access to the gallery, you have your own private gallery, all sorts of cool things. And then there's the collective membership, which has access to all the classes, all sorts of awesome, great, really awesome content. (laughs) And then there's the retreat, which is really cool. Um, so the awesome ladies live retreat, this is going to be our fourth annual retreat in July. It is this weekend of putting yourself in your story first. Amanda has been at the last two. They are, I mean, okay. So I am a person, I literally am a person who I am a super introvert. I love staying home. I love that I have a job where I don't have to leave my house, but this retreat weekend is the it's my favorite thing of the entire year we have women from all over the country fly in they come and they hang out in east lansing michigan for a weekend it is an amazing town i love showing it off we have a friday night meet and greet here it has been at my house for the last three years it will probably still be at my house this year if we get too many people to fill my house then we're gonna have it at uh the art museum, which will be awesome. And then Saturday, we have a whole day long uh, retreat of workshops on telling your story, on using selfies, um, creating all sorts of different craft projects. It's just fantastic. And then on Sunday, we have a photo walk around town. And then we have a goodbye social at the best ice cream place on the planet. It is amazing. And it's just, it's for people who need a weekend to remind themselves just how awesome they are and to be surrounded by amazing ladies. It's just incredibly empowering. It is wonderful. You will meet friends that you will have like literally for forever and you get to come and hang out with me. <laughs> the most important part, the <laughs> best part. It is, it is. I get to, cause I, I love that I get new friends. Honestly, it's, it's, it's wonderful to come and hang out and work on all these cool craft projects. But the best part about the retreat is the the connections that you make with other people. And like Mm -hmm. Amanda was saying that we met for the first time at a class in New York City, but I've been crafting in groups of, with groups of women since high school. And I think that spending time with other women crafting and telling your stories is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Mm Mm-hmm. And like this weekend is, it's it's my everything. I just love that I can give this weekend to other women. It sounds amazing. I mean, two of my favorite things is like, I love a craft retreat of like any kind. I'm into it. And then like, I, I think I said it on the interview I had with Amy Tangerine, but I know I've told her in person that I'm like, like a secret closeted scrapbooker, which is really not, I'm really not anymore. Like, you know, the cat's out of the bag. I love me a glue stick (laughs) and I love scrapbooking. So like, that sounds like so awesome. And like, Amanda, you and I kind of got on each other's radars because I was using your paper 
And I started posting it. Yeah. I mean, Highlight of I'm, my life. <laughs> I am a paper hoarder. Like, and I still, I looked at your paper today. My kid wanted some like colorful pink paper yeah. and I wouldn't let him use it. I was like, no, this is mommy's <laughs> paper. Let's get you some paper I don't yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. Highlight of my life that you use that pineapple paper. <laughs> oh, I mean, that it's, it's good pineapple paper. So for you, Amanda, I know you're a teacher, but are you still working within the the scrapbooking space like do you still do like design work yeah so I mean the short answer is no not currently but it's always flowing in the back of my mind because it's just this part of me that I love like I just love it that's why me and Kristen still talk Mm -hmm. about it all the time you know I'm still doing my own scrapbooking on the regular we just had a podcast episode about like routine and I was talking about like what my crafting routine has become you know all that stuff all that good stuff but yeah it's been like if you've been listening to the podcast over the past two years my story has changed like tremendously like when we first started Mm -hmm. I we started it because I had left working um for the happy planner and was kind of trying to do my own thing so we started it with me thinking you know it could be a good vehicle to promote what I had next and then like it just wasn't sustaining my life like trying to freelance or trying to do my own thing it just wasn't sustaining my life so yeah so smack like in the middle of us doing a podcast trying to promote what I was doing I was like I gotta get this regular nine to five job and go back and it was the smartest decision for me then and I've just been so grateful for it because it's been keeping me afloat and mm-hmm. I still get to do this, but um, Kristen will know. Like the first, uh, the first awesome ladies live I actually went to, I got it was at the end of August, the first one, right, and or in the middle of August, and I got the call for the interview for the teaching job like the day after it, while I was at in Michigan. So it was, oh. it all happened very fast. So I've been jolted back into this teaching profession that I didn't even think I wanted to go back into. But now that I'm older and wiser and need a lifeline, it's been the best thing ever. But because I was so jolted into it, I haven't gotten a chance to understand where that part of me, like the design part could shine because I'm still getting, Mm -hmm. you you know, a year and a half later, I'm still getting used to what hell. I always say teaching was like being on a treadmill too fast for your body. You keep trying to run (laughs) to to get get ahead. ahead. Right. So I've been thinking more, especially this year, how I could better creatively use my summer. So anyway, I feel like as the years go by with this teaching job, I'll get better at finding the pockets, right? We've been taught. So hopefully I have like a, um, an idea that I for a while was trying to get made like a product, but that's long since passed, but it's for teachers. So maybe in the future it'll work itself back in, but it's, I feel like it's always running the design part of my brain. I just haven't had time to figure out where it should be executed. Yeah, no, I hear you. I mean, I've got that. Yeah. Like, I I love to do the art stuff, but it's like finding a time to like actually put a paint, you know, between like the podcast and freelance yeah. gigs and a this and yeah. a that and two kids. It's just like, you know, sometimes there's not always a pocket to be found. And you listen to these like self-help people that are like, wake up an hour yeah. early, do this, do that. <laughs> it's like, dude, I am already yeah. waking up at the ass crack right. of dawn. Like there is not an earlier option for right. me. Right. <laughs> I hear you. That's how I feel. But it's there in the back of my mind. And when I feel like it's supposed to happen, it will happen. I'm not, it's like, because it's not my, it's not the thing that I'm trying to make, help me survive that the pressure's off. So I'm just kind of trying to feel it out. But sometimes, you know, I think that's a good thing. And maybe that's a good thing for our podcast that it's like, we're not making a living off of it. So we're not under this like extreme pressure to do these, to do these things. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, things that you, you love and your hobbies don't have to be a hustle. Right. There is always that. All right. I am going to end with you guys with my question I ask everybody, which is where would we go get queso? Like, so if I went to Lansing and I went to your event, is there a queso option there? (laughs) (laughs) And it's okay if there's not, because I I have discovered through this podcast, my life lesson that I have learned is that queso is not a nationwide phenomena like it is here in Austin. Okay. (laughs) So... (laughs) What I found when I moved to mid-Michigan was that if the restaurant says authentic Mexican cuisine, (laughs) it is, in fact, inauthentic Mexican (laughs) cuisine. But 
<laughs> there is a taco truck that is run very well. They are fantastic. So we can get some queso at the taco truck. But if you come anytime in winter, be prepared to like literally stand outside in freezing weather to get <laughs> said queso. Yeek. Also, the other option is for me to make you some. Oh, yeah. Because honestly, the best food in Lansing slash East Lansing might be at my house. Oh. She's, she loves cooking for people. Look at that hidden yeah. skill. And she has like a fresh garden of stuff in the back, her fresh basil and mozzarella. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Add, K- add queso to that one <laughs> shop. Oh, Yeah. And I might, I might have to, I might make a trip. Who knows? <laughs> it's, it's so worth it. That's one of the reasons why I have the Friday night meet and greet here is so that I can give people food from my garden because like that's, it's a whole love language thing. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. So what about you, Amanda? Do you have a, a go-to for queso? Well, like queso specific, just cheese. Like, I'm just thinking of cheese things, like where you can get like Mexican cheese. Think thing. of a, like a cheese dip. And I will say that everyone I've talked to in New York has pretty much told me it's in a jar <laughs> at the local <laughs> bodega. Like, yeah, that's, okay, okay. that's fair. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Like, when you, like, so there's, uh, I'm from, I'm in Long Island now. So Rockville Center is like the trendy hub. I know you're from Austin and and I, it, it reminds me of Austin. It's not. But it's like it's yeah. like where the trendy millennials go now and they got. So they have something called Dirty Taco and Tequila and it's based off a food truck that I think was somewhere in the south. I don't know. But I they have my favorite is that you can get like a bunch of different like artisan tacos there and they do uh the buffalo shrimp and blue cheese taco. So I love that. Mm. So, you know, kind of queso in there. But like when you said that, I was like up the block is a cheesecake factory. And I love their their cheese, the, the macaroni and cheese balls. That's some good queso oh, in there. That's true. That's true. See, th- this is the other thing. Queso is like a dip. Yeah, no, I know this. I know. I'm trying to think <laughs> of like a dip. I was thinking of like all cheese so- things. And I <laughs> no, everybody does. Everybody's like, let me think broad yeah. cheese. Like, yeah. And- Back when I used to live at home, Back when I used to live at home. Back when I lived in New Jersey, not when I actually lived with my parents because I didn't do that. <laughs> I haven't done that since high school. Um, Whole Foods in Paramus used to make this really good queso. So I would go to like the the um, Spanish, I don't know, the Mexican um, deli, mm-hmm. buy chorizo, then go to the Whole Foods, get their in-store prep chur- uh, queso, Mm -hmm. And then make queso for football using the chorizo and then the Whole Foods queso because it was made with, like, just the right amount of, like, preservatives for it to be the perfect consistency and also taste delicious. Yum. Oh, my God. It was so good. And then they stopped making it. And I, like, honestly threw, like, a hissy fit (laughs) temper tantrum because I'm a child when it comes to things like that worst day of my life when the whole food stopped making the queso how could you have football without queso right and then it was a sad sad day i'm gonna it be more really... on the hunt for kate like specifically queso not just yeah queso. you need to find us yeah I will, find a queso I will update you in the future okay well keep us keep us all updated on your hunt for queso the great the great queso yeah. hunt of 2020 <laughs> make it happen man I, I like it i like it all right ladies well i have loved having you on here i really i feel like this was a podcast therapy Yay. session it was wonderful <laughs> i have i have enjoyed it thoroughly i'm feeling ready to get back on into my podcast groove in 2020 you guys have been you're great there you were one of our favorite people on the podcast so I, we, love talking we talk to you. about your trees all we the love time talking to you Shit. You guys just stop <laughs> it or don't. You're our favorite. No. <laughs> Aw, well, thank you guys. It's been great talking. Thanks so excited. Can't All wait right. to hear the show. All right. Bye. Bye. I know I feel better after our chat, and now I'm ready to get back on a podcasting schedule. Seriously, maybe I need a co host. Any queso lovers out there who want to hang out in a closet with me wearing headphones? Anyone? Anyone? 
Thanks so much to Amanda and Kristen from Crafty Ass Females for stopping by and chatting. Be sure to check out the Awesome Ladies Project and bookmark Amanda's website for all upcoming artsiness and subscribe to the Crafty Ass Females podcast everywhere you listen. I will link to all of these things in the show notes. Want to hear more Creative Queso? Well, guess what? This is not my first time at the Interviewing a Fellow Podcaster Rodeo. Go back through the archives and check out my chats with Amy Tangerine, host of Craft a Life You Love, Nicole Stevenson from Dear Handmade Life, Vicki Howell of Craftish, and Grace Chan, host of Creativity School, plus more. In the meantime, if you loved this episode, please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, all the places with at Jennifer Perkins or at Creative Queso. Thank you to my producer, Mariah Gossett, and my music man, Chris Beck. Until next time, and I promise that next time won't be in three months. It'll just be in two weeks. I'll see you then. <laughs>